Uh, Olivia Gorinchas, the IMF Economic Council Director of Research. Uh, it's good to see you, sir. Thank you. Um, I, I'm reading the notes about this, and it's interesting. The It's sort of, uh, on the one hand, on the other hand, as it so often is in economics, uh, in that you admit that inflation's coming down, but at the same time, not fast or far enough. And you're still talking about uh, growth slowing down and the possibility of a hard landing. Yes, that is right. I mean, we have a baseline scenario that is one of you know, modest growth this year, 2.8%. Just revised a tad from our January projection by 0.1 percentage point and, and increasing back a little bit next year. And headline inflation coming back down. But core inflation, as you pointed out, has still not turned the corner in many countries. In Europe, it's still increasing. It has not uh, started decreasing. In the US, it's sort of we get different readings from one month to another, but it certainly not has been decisively coming down. So inflation has proved more persistent. It's actually one of the reasons why we have a mild downgrade is we anticipate that there will be a need for monetary policy to remain tighter for longer. Right. However, you also say debt levels remain high, which limits the ability of policymakers to respond. So since you can't have your cake and eat it, which is it? Are things OK? Are things going to get dangerously worse? What is your judgment? Well, our judgment is that the sort of our modal uh, scenario is one that, you know, gradually improves. Uh, recovery, but rocky. The main concern we have is that the downside risks around that scenario have increased a lot since our last round of projection. And that's largely because of the financial instability episode we've had. And there are two channels here, and they're playing at sort of different uh, speed and different strength. One is that, uh, you know, as a result of this financial instability, Banks around the world, certainly in the U.S., but also in the euro area and other advanced economies could look around and say, well, you know, maybe now is not the time to extend a lot of credit. And so we'll have to watch and see. But there could well be a, a, a lending a, a credit crunch coming down the pike in a number of countries. Now, mind right, you, but, but can, I just itself, jump, can I just jump in there? Because I, I want to just advance on that, because that is essentially Jay Powell's point to a large extent, that the credit potential credit crunch is going to do our work for us. It is a de facto rate increase. Do you subscribe to that? Yes, by and large. If there is, for whatever reason, in particular case, the credit crunch, if there is a slowdown in aggregate demand and global uh, uh, demand uh, more generally, then uh, central banks around the world don't need to do as much to bring inflation back to target. Now, you know, a lending crunch is, is not something that is necessarily as controlled as a central bank hiking right. rate. So there is right. there is volatility around that. But there is some degree of substitution. Right. But you say inflation's unlikely to return to target to 2025. Now, in this scenario that we're in at the moment, is there sufficient tightening both through uh, the policy rate and through uh, a, a, a possible credit crunch? Is there sufficient in the economy, in, in the market economy, to bring down inflation sufficiently, or do you think higher rate rises will be necessary, even if it's just one or two more? Well, right now, given where we are, and in our again in our baseline scenario, where we have uh, rates in the U.S. peaking at around you know a little bit above five percent, and in the euro area around three point seven five or something like that, that is what would bring inflation back to our targets by the end of 24 or, or, or 25. There could be surprises to inflation because it's been proving more persistent in the last few reads that we've had. And so that might require a little bit more tightening. But again, on the other side, you have this lending contraction that might sort of do the job for, uh, for the Fed or the European Central Bank. Uh, now, this yeah. is one thing, and, and we've tried to quantify this. You know, if there is a lot of lending contraction, then in fact, we could see growth slowing down faster. We have in our report what we call a plausible alternative scenario. So it's to say, you know, here's another way things could unfold. And it's, you know, quite reasonable that it might unfold that way. And with that uh, lending crunch, then credit crunch, then we would have growth of about 2.5% right. instead of 2.8%.
I'm looking forward to discussing all of this with you over a cup of coffee when I hopefully see you at the, uh, at the IMF at the spring meetings later in the week, sir. Very grateful. Thank you.